Right, there has been a lot of ups and downs and confusion and rumour and talk about Frankie de Jong joining Manchester United this summer, probably as Ten Hag's first major signing. Now, Barcelona apparently need to sell him, but Frankie seems to have been beating around the bush a little bit when he's asked about his future. Doesn't really seem like he wants to, to commit to one or the other, which again, you can understand because... If he goes, yeah, get me out of here, they don't want me and I'd like to go play for United, then it leaves him in a real tricky situation should United manage to get a deal agreed. I think he's playing the game in a big way, to be honest. So whether or not he joins, it seems totally up in the air at the moment. I think there's something they could do there and it could happen very quickly. But United seem like they're struggling to get the deal done, even if they seem keen to do it. Now, a number of midfielders have left the club. Um, United are going to get at least one midfielder. I'm, I'm absolutely certain of that. Whether or not it's who we want, whether or not it's this guy, that's still up for debate. But I'd, I'd be quite certain saying United are going to get a midfielder this season uh, and this summer. Having worked under Ten Hag before, De Jong makes so much sense in terms of he is a very, very good footballer. He is someone that Ten Hag can work with, has worked with. And Joey, you know, he, he actually absolutely fits the bill for, for what United really need. Possible midfield setup that we could see currently is Fernandez in the 10 and Frankie on the left um, in the sort of number eight sort of box to box sort of midfielder central midfielder kind of role and then there would be the other role and the other role is the one that's up in the air at the moment it's probably going to be McTominay, Fred, Garner, someone until we sign somebody and I think we do need to sign someone who is a, a definite starter ahead of any of those guys. But I think that's probably how it's going to work. De Jong would probably start as one of the deeper ones in that double pivot. He has the ability to receive the ball from the defence, loves to do that, loves to take it under pressure and then break the lines and move the ball forward, either passing or dribbling with it. He's good at both. And a big problem that United have is that the two defensive midfielders that we've seen McFred, the, the Fred and McTominay sort of duopoly of, of central midfield. It hasn't been good enough and it hasn't been creative enough and it hasn't been progressive enough, but that's what's been left to play for us. Obviously, both of those have had a poor season. I definitely expect Ten Hag to improve at least one of those positions, if not both of those positions. And despite a potential improvement, I think there's a good chance that I actually think Ten Hag might actually improve these players and actually only playing one of them would be an improvement because it's going to limit the impact that they have as, as a pair. Um, and I think if you bring Frankie in and playing instead of one of those um, and then you have one of the other ones in, in the other side of the pivot alongside them, I, I don't think they look as bad as they look together. They're extremely frustrating together. I think that lessens a little bit when there's only one of them in there. And I can see a system where Fred's actually effective in the final third and in the middle third because he is you know, a pretty honest, hard-working player. Um, and he gives it to De Jong. So that looks to start something. I could see that working. And and likewise with McTominay, is, he is a good hard worker and he is good off the ball. And I think someone that could win the ball and just make the simple pass to someone like a De Jong that would kind of work, but my ideal scenario would be that we sign somebody and it's two new players in the six and the eight role. Further forward, now I've often seen De Jong described as a box-to-box -box midfielder and I understand why. Box-to-box -box in my head is someone that's extremely combative and although I see a combative player in De Jong more than I think most people give him credit for, that's not what he is. For me, he's a central midfielder. Yo, know, almost in the Brian Robson kind of mold. Like, he can mix it. He can uh, do everything a central midfielder can do. He can score goals. He can create goals. He's got passing range. He can do it short. He will defend. Like, he's a, just a good all-round central midfield player. He's got the ability to beat a man. And he can beat the opposition's press by quick feints, good feet, good footwork. Pogba would try and do a similar sort of thing um, using his body um, in the same way that Frankie kind of does it. But... Frankie's a little bit more nimble, um, potentially a bit more explosive when he does it. He's also extremely good at picking out passes, both short and long. His passing accuracy in La Liga last season was 91.3%, which is ridiculous. And despite, he only got four goals and five assists in all competitions. The expected threat, which is a bit of a nonsense stat, but it was actually the 14th best in Europe. Now, the expected threat stat is a bit woo, 
I think it's safe to say, but if you're up there as being one of the, you know, just outside of the top dozen of players, it's probably worth looking at, even if you don't give it 100% credence, there's there's something there, isn't there, at least? That's not bad for someone who's played in a, a pretty shit Barcelona team by modern standards. Now, the fact Ten Hag is going all out for De Jong makes me think that there's there's going to be a lot of emphasis placed upon him. And the fact that he wants him in as his first signing means that then other signings will follow suit because he is the first signing. Ten Hag's not really spent big before. It's not something Ajax do on a regular basis, so it's not something we've seen. If he gives the thumbs up to go for a player that he's worked with, that he trusts, that he knows what he's getting out of, on the back end of a midfield clear out, I think that's probably a benefit for us. Now, we've obviously lost Mata, Pogba, Matic, Lingard. That suggests Frankie could be one of the most key players in the team, if not the key player in the team. Now, like I said earlier, he's not going to do it on his own. Um, he might even, though, overtake Bruno in terms of the pecking order and in terms of importance in the team with the amount of emphasis that I'm seeing being placed on him at the moment. Depends how he goes about things. But United's midfield has always had depth, not just in terms of pure depth, but in terms of quality as well. Now, there's some signings being rumoured at the moment, and I think if you get a couple of these signings over the, the line, you really could have a six-man midfield. You can have, let's say we sign a six. You bring in a number six. You've got McTominay to deputise. You've got De Jong there as your starting number eight. You've also got Donny or uh, Fred as a backup number eight. You might have Donny or Ericsson um, as a backup to Bruno as the 10. You've also got Garner, Levitt, Galbraith. Question marks over their suitability for playing Premier League football are fine, and that's you're perfectly normal to have, but you've got you've also got the ability of those players to be your third choice in any given position. That's not a bad sort of way to set your squad up. It starts to look a little bit better than it, it did certainly last season, doesn't it? What I don't want to see is Andreas Pereira anywhere near this. We've already lost a few players. I think there's probably a few more that could go. But I think De Jong is such an obvious signing for Manchester United. They talk about where does he fit in? Number eight. And I see a lot of people sort of talking about him being a number six. He played in a 4-2-3-1, which means that he was on that number six line, but his job wasn't the sole destroying number six he was always the one that had a little bit more about him and, and when you watch him as a player there is more to his game and that's why I, I say a bit of a Brian Robson he might start deep but he cuts around every single blade of grass there's an energy to him there's a real real quality footballer in there and, he, and he's one that I think would definitely transform the midfield for United I can understand why Ten Hag is really pushing for this one before anyone else because I think getting this signing right is so important. And I think we'll get it done. It's just frustrating watching the lack of movement on this one and, and seeing how long it sort of looks like it's taking because I think if we got this one in, you could start to have some real positivity about what's going forward. Anyway, that's what I think. You guys let me know in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think there's any other options out there? Should we fail to get De Jong? I'd like to know what you're thinking. See you in the next one. Real fan ownership, real fan input, real fan change, real fan power. 50 plus one, we can go better than that. 100 plus none. Download our app, view the free content, read about the club, that's fine. But if you want more, become a member. To vote, to go behind the scenes, to make an impact interact with a global community around the world, influencing how we grow, where we play, club ethics and values. The more members we have, the faster we grow. Support the club, run the club, own the club. This is ours and no one will take it away. The future is in all our hands.